everyone, it's Nancy, your favorite innkeeper from Old Square Inn in Mountjoy, Pennsylvania, in beautiful Lancaster County. If you are joining me today, please drop your name in the comments. Tell me what you're doing this beautiful middle of May. Can you hear the sizzling going on here already? Yes, I already have the carne asada on the grill and ready to go. Now this cooks up pretty quickly, but it has to sit for several minutes also. So I want to be sure that I had something delicious to show you. Carne asada is a Mexican dish. It's that meat that you find in fajitas. Carne asada translates literally to grilled meat. But what is so delicious about this grilled meat is that it is just chock full of all different kinds of flavors. And you put this on, we're gonna make a marinade and put it on skirt steak. I want to show you what that skirt steak looks like. This is one pound of skirt steak. Can you see the big, uh, the grain through here? These are like long strips of meat. The skirt steak comes from the abdominal muscles in the steer. So this is a very lean cut of meat, and it's a very tough cut of meat, unless you're going to marinate it, which is what we're going to do. Um, all right, so let's start our marinade. I wish you could smell this. This smells so good already. All right, several ingredients in this, but so delicious. You're going to be so happy with this. All right, we are going to start with five tablespoons of soy sauce and four tablespoons is one quarter cup so I'm going to go one quarter cup of soy sauce and then one extra tablespoon this is going to kind of make the base of our marinade that in there and one extra tablespoon of that there we go Got that going. And then I need five tablespoons of olive oil. Oh, this sounds so good already. Can you hear that sizzle? So I'm going to do one cup and one tablespoon. And one more tablespoon of this. Here we go. Ooh, delicious. And then I'm going to need three tablespoons of white vinegar. I have my vinegar here, hold on just a second. And the vinegar goes right in there. And the vinegar is going to be one of the things that helps tenderize the meat. Now, if you've ever had ceviche, um, that's where an acid kind of cooks the meat. This is the same principle behind that. It tenderizes the meat for you. Okay, I can take that off now. All right, so we have the olive oil, the soy, the white vinegar. Next, we're going to put in two teaspoons of cumin, and you have to smell this. Smell that. I know, so good. This is like every Mexican dish of my dreams. This is this is what you think of when you think of tacos or any any delicious thing like that. Next, we're going to put one teaspoon of chili powder. Give it a little kick. Get in there, chili powder. Then we need um, one teaspoon of smoked paprika. And I have pansies. Mm, smell that smoked paprika so good, right? Pansy smoke. Looks like I'm just about to the end of that jar. Oh, I love the smell of these. If you just have regular paprika, use that. You'll be fine. Just gives it a little bit different flavor profile, but it will still be delicious. You also need one teaspoon of onion powder. Get over there. Okay, let me set that aside. And then we need one teaspoon of white pepper. Now, white pepper and black pepper are made from the same berry of the pepper plant. The only difference is with black pepper, the berries are harvested before they're ripe, and then you get that little uh, black uh, skin on that pepper seed, and that's what helps make it that hot, pungenty taste. So with white pepper, I need one teaspoon of this as well. 
white pepper is harvested when the berries are ripe and then they're soaked, the skin is taken off, and then they're processed. So it has a different kind of flavor, almost a more earthy flavor, like a deeper flavor to it. Um, if you don't have white pepper, use a couple tablespoons of black pepper, but each time you change an ingredient, you're changing the flavor profile. And that's not a bad thing, it just makes it different. Okay, the next thing is uh, Mexican oregano. And that, again, is a different kind of oregano. But if you don't have that, you use regular Italian oregano. Mexican oregano is um, kind of a deeper flavor, a more earthy flavor as well. And the last thing I'm going to put, put in here is one and a half limes juiced. All right, this looks so good. And it's the juice of this lime that's going to help tenderize the meat. Now, this cooks up in just a few minutes. When you cook this, you're gonna be cooking this only about four or five minutes on each side on high. Um, ideally, put it on your grill. You get that great grill flavor. I'm not out at my grill, obviously. So mine is in a cast iron skillet on the stove and you still get that great charred grilled flavor, right? Get this in here. Now, this is going to marinate for at least three hours. The more you marinate it, the more flavor it's going to suck up. However, comma, here's what happens if you leave it in there too long. You don't want to leave this overnight. You don't want this to go for any more than, say, six hours, because what happens is the lime and the vinegar start to break down the fibers of the meat and you're going to get a really mushy dried out kind of taste and after putting all this uh, these delicious flavors in it you sure don't want it dried out i um did that over a strainer so i could avoid the seeds now all i need to do stir this up and then i'm going to add two cloves of garlic minced so I'm gonna use my garlic smasher for the two cloves of garlic. Come over here, garlic. All right, now you know how to get the skin off of these easily, right? I'm just gonna take your knife, smash it down, and then you can very easily peel off that papery skin. Where'd I just put my garlic smasher? Here it is. All right, this is um, one of those food party garlic smashers but I like this because it's very sturdy and it has its own little scrubber that comes with it. Look at this, how cool is that? that and you just push the, um, the, the used up garlic out of the holes and then you can clean up more easily. Okay, last chunk of garlic. I have some guests outside right now. They are out enjoying the patio, just finished serving them dessert and came in to show you how to make carne asada. Oh my gosh, smell this, smell that. Oh, that smells so good. All right, now we are going to take this flank steak and you can use a, or a skirt steak rather. You can use a flank steak. That's going to be a little bit tougher with more membranes in it. Um, you can use round steak if you want. I like this because of the cut. When you cut this, it's going to be cut across the grain and because it's a thinner cut of meat as well. So this is going to marinate and what I'm going to do is just put this in a plastic bag, get in there steak, and then I'm going to pour my marinade in the bag get in there marinade, and then put this in the fridge for about four hours. And then this will be something delicious for later. Now, if you wanted to make this and you're like, ah, I'm not ready to cook this yet, but I don't want my meat to get all chunky, you can put this in the freezer. So when it's in the freezer, that marinating process stops until it starts to thaw. I'm also going to put this in a pan just because, you know, you never know when the bag might leak. 
What I like about putting it in the bag is there's marinade on both sides. I can flip this over if I want to. That stays right there. All right, let's get this out of the way. And I want to show you what's up with this delicious item. Let me grab a paper towel here. All right, dig this. You see I'm in short sleeves. This is the first time in like 100 years, right? I got a call. They're opening the pool tomorrow. Tomorrow. It's like the middle of May, and they're going to be opening the pool. Well, I can't complain about that too much. All right, here is my meat. Doesn't that look delicious? Can you see the grain across this way? So when I cut this, I'm going to cut this way because that's going to make it easier to bite and easier to chew. Now, ideally, this is going to be pink inside. You cannot cook a flank steak or a skirt steak too long. If you do, all that happens is that you dry it out. It's also important that this rests for about five minutes because what happens in cooking is that the, the, the meat kind of draws together like those muscle fibers tighten, but there's still juice in here. So the juice needs to go someplace. If you let this sit, let it sit for a little bit, then the meat kind of goes, <sighs> okay, I can take your water now. Come on, bring it on, bring on the juices. If you cut this before it sits, you're going to see a nice tray full of all your delicious juices out there. And you sure don't want that to happen, right? All right, I wanna show you what I have going with this. Oh, this looks so good. Don't you want a bite of this? I told my guests this morning that I was going to be doing this demonstration. And Bob said, what are you gonna do with all the food? That's always an issue, isn't it? But I don't know how much how many leftovers we'll have with this. Though. Looks so good. All right, I'm gonna cut it across the grain. This should be pink inside. This is the kind of meat that you see. Mm, yum. And I want to show you another cut of meat I have as well. I have a piece of round steak here. You can do it with round steak but I think the cut on the other is a little bit better. And the round steak kind of cooks through pretty quickly. Oh my gosh, so good. Look at that piece of meat. Look at that, so good. And I am just going to pile some of this on. Now you can use this on, um, on a tortilla. Uh, you can make a sandwich out of it. Um, I don't have Tolero rolls, but I have these things closer to a ciabatta roll. You can put that on there and put all your delicious things on top. But I am going to make a fabulous fajita for a Tolero roll. I don't really need you. You get over there. So first I'm going to take, I grilled up some peppers and some tomatoes and some onions. I'm going to put this on my fajita first. Come on, get in there. I know you want to eat this, right? I do too. been thinking about this all day long. Like my mouth is watering. I know. Crazy, right? Um, you could also serve this as a main dish with uh, some Spanish rice. All right, I'm going to put some avocados on here as well. I know you just want to bite this, don't you? And then let's put on the meat. Oh, baby. So delicious. So delicious. Oh, who wants a bite of this? You get the first bite. Here. So good. I have to take a drink of water first. Mm. Cerebus. All right, I'm ready to bite into this deliciousness. Mm. I need more meat on that because that is so good. Oh my gosh, seriously, you seriously have to come and sit on this porch someday. And, um, next week we're doing white cake. Maybe we can have um, like a pre-memorial day party or something. Wouldn't that be fun? Here, bite for you. Bite for me. 
That is so good. And there's so much flavor in it. Let me just grab that meat. Mm. And you cook this on the grill. This is going to be slamming. One more bite. Okay. Come on, get over there. One more bite. So good. Mmm. The hardest part, I think, is waiting until everything marinates. That's it. That's how easy it is. You're going to cook it like four to six minutes on each side. Some of that is going to depend on how thick your cut of meat is, but you want to have that pink in the middle. You cannot overcook this or you're just going to have like a big old chewy piece of somebody's flip-flop. It's not going to taste good. Uh, cook it on high heat four to six minutes on each side, let it rest for about five minutes, slice it up, and you are good to go. All right, everybody, uh, let me know how this turns out if you're gonna make this. Share this with your friends, and I hope you stop in and see me sometime. Pool's gonna be open tomorrow. Weather is fabulous. I am looking forward to having you stay with me here at the end. All right, everybody, I will see you next Wednesday for white cake. Mm, that's going to be so good. Wouldn't that be good with lemon curd or raspberry? Super delicious. And remember, something good is going to happen to you and through you. I'm Nancy, your favorite innkeeper from Old Square Inn in Mountjoy, Pennsylvania in beautiful Lancaster County. Bye, everybody. Can't wait.